Hello everyone. Welcome to Divine Conversations. My name is Eric. Thank you so much for joining me. So I wanted to come on and do a reading for the full moon in Gemini, which happens to be Thursday, November 22nd. And if full moons aren't stressful enough, it just so happens to be landing on Thanksgiving Day. If you are here in the United States, you would potentially be celebrating Thanksgiving. Um, I don't, I'm not sure if, you know, they do much of that outside of the United States. But anyway, that's besides the point. For those of us that are celebrating the holiday, Thanksgiving tends to be, well, can be quite stressful, depending on your family dynamic. On top of that, we have a full moon that night. <laughs> so I wanted to come on and do a reading for that anyway, just because, um, you know, it's the full moon. I want to help, you know, give you guys a little bit of clarity, potentially. But then once I realized that it was on, that it fell on Thanksgiving Day, I was like, oh shit, we definitely have to do a reading for that. So you can potentially, you can look at this as some sort of um, guidance to, you know, what to look out for surrounding Thanksgiving, if that happens to be a rough stressful, tumultuous time for you. But also this is just a night, a, a look, a reading into the energies of what's going on for us throughout this full moon. Now I am recording this on Sunday, November 18th. I have been feeling the effects of this full moon for the, the, the previous week. Um, also what is affecting us right now is Mercury is now officially in retrograde and is moving in through, uh, is moving through Sagittarius. I'm not sure if it's actually as of the 18th because it went, it went retrograde, I think, on the 16th. So as of the 18th, I'm not sure if it's actually in Sagittarius yet. I think it might be. But either way, it's moving. It's going retrograde through Sagittarius. And that is adding a lot of purgy, purgy, purginess to the situation. On top of that, we have this full moon that's happening. So um, this full moon is in Gemini. It is on November 22nd. So... With that said, I'm going to be doing a general freestyle reading. These are the same readings that I do for the monthly zodiacs. Um, these are the same readings that are available for personals. Um, just a side note, I'm not really taking any personal readings right now. Uh, originally, when I first mentioned it, I said I may not be doing it until January. That may be too much of a hiatus. Um, I just need some time to, you know, purge and heal and, and rest and take some time off, um, you know, catch up on some personal stuff. So I'm going to be taking readings again starting December and starting in early December. So um, for the rest of November, I'm going to be taking a break from personal readings. But this reading is available. This is this general freestyle reading. So it's set up, if you're unfamiliar with them, it's set up in the sense that I shuffle the cards. I pull three cards from the bottom of the, de of the deck to get the overall energy of the situation. And then we have two, two rows of sets of two cards, four slots each. That might be a little bit confusing. But the first row here, second row here. You'll see it eventually. But the first row is going to be the energies moving into this full moon. The, le the second row is going to the be the post energies, okay? Full moons are not just felt or experienced the day of. You can experience it days in advance, like I have been. You can experience, continue to experience it days after, okay? Energies are fluid. There is no cut and dry space between one energy and another. Everything just kind of flows together. Everything is fluid. So with that said, also keep in mind that this is a general reading, and this is also not sign-specific, okay? Like not zodiac sign-specific. It is a general reading. So you may not resonate with this at all. That's quite all right. If you don't resonate with it, no worries. I'm sure there you'll be able to find some other um, uh, readers out there. There are many of us that are going to be doing these full moon readings, um, not just for this Gemini moon, but for the new moon, the next full moon and all that. I would encourage you to maybe seek out maybe some, someone else if you do not necessarily resonate with this reading. But it is my intention to bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good or for all involved. So if you find yourself gravitating to this reading for whatever reason, most likely there is a message in here for you, okay? So I'm going to be doing the, the, the tarot, starting with the tarot, and then I'm going to be ending with some oracles. I'm going to pull some uh, oracle from the unicorns to get some action guidance, some physical guidance when it comes to the situation, and then Lightworker Oracle and Crystal Mandala Oracle, yeah? So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, Spirit. <laughs> Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. 
please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved surrounding this full moon in Gemini on November 22nd, 2018. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys, so the color that I'm seeing um, associated with this situation is yellow. Yellow is the solar plexus. Yellow is, you know, the color of the sun, the color of illumination, of vibrancy, um, uh, some communication to a certain extent. The official color for communication is blue. Uh, however, when I, in this sense, when it comes to the, the color yellow, the yellow being the color of the solar plexus, which is the third chakra in the chakra system, three is a number of communication, of um, teamwork, uh, mind, body, and spirit coming together. And so obviously I just five, I just saw 555 on the counter. Lots of changes happening guys. Um, but with the, this color yellow, I'm getting the number three, I'm getting communication in order to be, to be a team player. You got to communicate with, with each other, whether that be with individuals in your life or whether that be within yourself, mind, body, spirit. Um, and that theme of communication definitely goes with the energies of Gemini, which is where the full moon is taking place. Gemini is very much about communication, is very much about um, travel, learning, seeking new things, trying new things. Gemini is like the baby of the zodiac. Gemini, Gemini is a mutable sign. Um, and so Gemini is pretty much able to put their energies towards anything that they really seem fun, exciting, something that they're intrigued towards. They really like to move around and try new things, try different things. And that is an energy that we're using here for this full moon to help us purge, to help us heal, to help us release some things that we may have been tr had trouble releasing. So a lot of communication could be going on with you within yourself. Um, you may be really be taking some time. I know I have been. I've been in pretty much of a, a, a pretty serious hermit mode but I've been using that hermit mode to really get to the nitty gritty of some of my own personal issues. And I really feel like that's what's happening here with this full moon in Gemini for many of us. If you haven't been taking advantage of this um, energy in order to do so, I highly recommend it. So does spirit. We're going through a really purgy time, you know, we're really finally releasing a lot of the shit that's been holding us back. Okay. And so to be quite honest, the way I'm seeing it right now, and in, in speaking of it this way, this full moon in Gemini is kind of a perfect energy to do some serious uh, healing, some serious cleansing, okay? All right, guys. We're not gonna get, we're going to get one more shuffle going. Oh, the other thing I wanted to say. Ooh, okay. Hold on. I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready for the cards yet. The one, the other thing I wanted to say, this this full moon in uh, Gemini is very much working in tandem with uh, Mercury going retrograde in Sagittarius. Mercury is the ruling planet of Gemini, I believe. Uh, Mercury is about communication. Mercury is kind of mischievous. I think is I please correct me if my wrong if I'm wrong, but I kind of almost feel like Sagittarius is ruled by Mercury as well. Um, but Gemini and Sagittarian energy kind of go hand in hand, in my opinion. Uh, they're both mutable signs. They're both action takers. They're both seekers. Seekers in, in, in um, Gem um, Gemini being a, a, a logical, uh, informational, mental seeker. Sagittarius being a almost like a spiritual warrior type of seeker, seeking sometimes occult information, esoteric information, things that are just made potentially against the norm. And so the, with these two in tandem, I'm, I'm probably wrong about Mercury being the ruler, ruling planet of uh, Sagittarius. I do kind of want to look this up. <laughs> I do. Give me a second here. But I, I, whether whether that's the ruling planet or not, um, it just feels like these two energies are really helping us. Um, they're really helping us purge. Excuse me, guys. Give me just a second here. Okay, no. Jupiter. Okay, Jupiter is the ruling planet of Sagittarius. Please excuse me. I was wrong on that. Um, let me just double check here. 
Yes, okay, so Mercury is the ruling planet of Gemini, but Jupiter is the ruling planet of Sagittarius, okay? Um, and actually, and Sagittari and, and Jupiter just entered Sagittarius, so that's a really lucky thing. That's really kind of awesome. But with um, Gemini and Sagittarius being major elements right now, especially when it comes to this full moon, I really feel like there's... Uh, uh, a greater potential for us to really get down to the nitty gritty of some things that we have we have been trying to heal or have wanted to heal for quite some time. All right, okay. Ooh, the cards. Okay. The cards. I guess don't want to be shuffled anymore. So I'm just gonna get to it then. I'm just gonna give me one more, one last shuffle, and then we're gonna get to it. There we go. All right. Here we go, guys. Alrighty, overall energy for this full moon in Gemini, <laughs> we're starting out with strength, all right? So strength is Leo energy. This is pride and ego, but this is also the strength to face your inner demons, okay? In many cases, um, we have, uh, in many decks, this is, rep this is, uh, this card is depicted as a woman taming a lion. And so we're kind of in a situation where we're taming a, the beast of, you know, ourselves. Um, in this deck, this is the unicorn tarot, but in this deck, you have a figure that has a spear here, okay? It's kind of reminding me of Sagittarian energy because Sagittarius is the archer, but this is, this almost looks like a warrior, okay? This is the strength to get down to the nitty gritty of everything, okay? We have the 10 of wands. Look at that. Wow. Wow. Look at this, guys. The Ten of Wands, burdens. What have you? What has been burdening you? What has been hold, burdening you? What has been holding you back? This is an energy of facing up to what you have accepted as your core beliefs, and actually really deciding, really asking yourself: Do these beliefs fit me? Are they? Do they serve me? Are they in service of me, or are they holding me back? And the situation here with strength is the strength to overcome them, to release yourself from them, to build new belief systems. This can be very, very tricky, okay? We find, wow, we have the Three of Pentacles, which is self-mastery type energy, mind, body, and spirit, the number three. And finally, we have the Three of Cups. I told you guys I was really feeling an energy of three. And the first card that came out here is Strength, and that's got that's got a, a lot of yellow energy. That was the yellow that I was seeing. Yellow is um, strength, the sun, yes, illumination. Okay, so with these burdens that we are releasing, that we're identifying and working on releasing or reshaping or rebuilding, you have a situation that is that can be pretty stressful. Why? Because many of us have belief systems that we've adopted from people outside of ourselves, friends, family. Many of these belief systems come from our childhood, are deeply rooted, come from ancestors, ancestral backgrounds, uh, cultural backgrounds, religious backgrounds. And if these are not serving you, it can be difficult to look at the people that you have accepted from these, these belief systems from and say to them, I no longer resonate with this. I'm no longer going in this direction. I am changing my belief systems and I'm doing something differently. That is definitely going to need to take some strength. And that is definitely a mode of self, I want to say self-realization, but self-mastery. The Three of Pentacles is very much about self-mastery to me, okay? Uh, it's about teamwork. It's about entrepreneurship. It's about, it's about building something new with the help of another or multiple other people. Threes are a number of communication and teamwork. You have three, you have two depictions of threes. Three of Pentacles, Three of Cups. The Three of Cups here is the celebratory aspect. This is, not only are you experiencing this on a physical level with the pentacles, the three of pentacles, you're experiencing this on an emotional level. What truly serves you? What truly brings you fulfillment? This could also be about finding soulmate, uh, soul family, not, not necessarily soulmates. Well, yes, they can be soulmates. Soul family can definitely be soulmates. Okay, soulmates don't have to just be romantic partners. Soulmates can be friends, family members, businesses, 
uh, that you work at, bosses, you know, anyone that, that really has, you have a deep connection with, a soul tied to. So this can be um, connecting with your soul tribe, connecting with soul family, aligning with your soul family. I'm picking up for some of you, even though some of them may not be physically in your life, aligning with them on an energetic level. And that may help you, <clears throat> that may help you realize that some of these foundation that you have is burdensome and that encouragement from that soul family alignment can help you on an energetic level, can help you have the strength to face up to this stuff and finally release it. Okay. So we're going to get into the first, the first column, the first row. This, these are the energies leading up to and the time on the time period of the full moon. First set of surrounding energies, you have the eight of pentacles doing the work. All right. So there's going, there's a lot of work that's happening here. This to me feels very joyous. I'm getting the, uh, a lighthearted and fun loving energy of Gemini here in this work that you're doing. Now it may not be so fun. <laughs> it could be pretty rough, but uh, I really feel like spirit is encouraging us to keep in mind that you know, Gemini does have a very lighthearted sense of self to it. So you can really tap into that should you really be doing, having a hard time with a lot of this, yes? Eight of Pentacles is coupled with the High Priestess. So you're doing work here, but this is not, this. you're doing physical work, but this is from an esoteric point of view. The High Priestess is about intuition. The High Priestess is, is, the priestess is about um, secrets. Okay, so this is doing work to uncover the secrets that have been holding you back, the secrets that you have been hiding from yourself. This, this is also downloads from the universe often. I like to see it as this. Okay, so also this could be talking about work is being done behind the scenes. So if you have been feeling like really tired lately, just really worn down, not really knowing where to go, kind of confused, there is an energy of a lot of work being done in the background. This could be work being done in the spirit realms, um, like in dream states, something like that, or angels, guides, and whatnot, working on your behalf in the background, in the spiritual realms to help you complete this cycle, to help you do this work in self-mastery, in rebuilding, okay? Second set of surrounding energies, you have the Page of Rods. Self-discovery is what I see a lot of the time with this with this card. For some of you, there is a, a, a spiritual awakening that's happening surrounding this full moon, and thus you are getting a new idea about life, about yourself, and you are becoming creatively inspired in some way. That could be to create, a, uh, to start creating a new uh, work of art if you are an artist, um, start a new passion project, start a new job, uh, go in a new way, in a new path. Basically, is what's happening here. And with it being in the page of rod, of being depicted as the page of rods, or in other decks, it's the page of wands. This is something that is really inspiring you you are really inspired by or through. Um, and also this could be, this is very much about in service of spirit. This is spiritually guided. This could be you embarking on a new journey in your spirit, uh, uh, embarking on, excuse me, on a new path in your spiritual journey. Yes. Page of Rods is coupled with the Two of Cups. My, my, isn't that gorgeous? The Two of Cups um, is about soulmates, sure. But for most of, what I've been channeling recently. I'm very much a, a, a channeler for, of the divine. I'm very much about um, bringing forward the best messages to serve you in whatever situation that you're going through. I really don't um, offer services that like say, okay, well, what is like that really digging into what your soulmate is doing. If I'm doing that, I'm doing it in order to get you the information that you need so that you can do your own self work, not necessarily so that you can spy on someone else. So when the two of cups comes out for me, this often talks about the balance and union between masculine and feminine energy within. And because of that, and coupled with the page of wands or page of rods here, there is definitely a balance that's coming into play that is helping you be a new version, a better version, however you want to say it. It's helping you discover more about yourself. You are discovering, going, you're seeking, right? Page of wands, page of rods, page of wands. 
can be very much a Sagittarian energy in the seeker aspect of situations, right? So you are seeking new knowledge. You are going through some self-discovery here, obviously, with, this is exactly what we've been talking about, in order to bring a greater union between, within yourself. And when that union happens within yourself, more of your life can flow than it ever has in the, in the past. Coming into union within doesn't necessarily mean it's going to it's going to just bring a soulmate into your life, a lover, a romantic partner, or whatnot. No, there's so much more to life than just a romantic relationship. Being in union with yourself will allow you to do the things that you came here to do that you may have always wanted to do but never able never really got around to it never was really able to felt blocked from doing it why because of all these burdens here with the ten of wands you won't be able to come into this union within yourself if you are constantly carrying these burdens that hold you back these burdens that are been placed on your back by other people by belief systems that no longer serve you by ancestral karma that kind of thing okay the current challenge in these surrounding energies and these upcoming en or these uh, energies leading up into and on the, the day of the full moon, you have the Six of Cups, the past, walking down memory lane, being nostalgic, um, working with your inner child. So it's funny because the Six of Cups is a card of children, childhood, and Gemini. Um, is the child, is the baby of the Zodiac. So there is a lot of inner child healing that could be happening here for you. Uh, nurturance of your inner child. Um, connecting with your inner child, especially with the Page of Wands. Connecting with your inner child that can help you become more passionate or reignite some passions that you may have let go of as you approached and got deeper into adulthood. Okay, Six of Cups is coupled with the five of pentacles. How has your inner child been left out in the cold? What happened in your childhood that left you feeling a sense of lack, a sense of not being good enough, a sense of not being able to uh, to handle the, the what life has to throw at you? What have you accepted or adopted from your childhood that has kept you in this burdensome state? And healing, understanding, identifying those things and healing the light, the situation around them. This is really beautiful. So the uh, final message um, for this, these uh, up leading and leading up energies to into and on the day of the full moon, you have the King of Wands or King of Rods. Standing in your power, I'm hearing, going after what it is you want. The King of Wands is a fixed energy, so this is more Leo energy with strength here as also a, an energy of Leo. But this to me is someone who stands firm in what in what they believe in and with, with the utmost confidence, self-confidence, being able to look at a situation and say, okay, that's your opinion on the situation. That's not how I do things, and I'm just going to go in my own way. I'm going to go my own way and I'm going to manifest that which I want. I'm going to go after what I want because I'm passionate about it and I'm confident in myself. This is all about self-confidence with the King of Wands here. So you really, we really have the potential to stand up for ourselves and what we truly believe in instead of what others force us to believe in, what we force ourselves to believe in for the acceptance of others. The King of, of Rods, when he's positively aspected, he's not somebody that really gives in to public opinion. He has his own beliefs about what he, who he is and what he wants, and he doesn't let anybody sway him from that. And this is an energy that we have the ability to tap into, to, uh, to, to integrate with, with this full moon in Gemini here, okay? King of Rods is coupled with the Ten of Swords, yes. That is beautiful. Being done with the conflict and finally standing up for ourselves and who we believe to be. Individually, not what society has labeled us as, not what people expect us to be, not what people have come to learn or understand or deduce of who we are based on the actions from the past. No, this is standing up for who you know you truly are, who you know you have always been, but never really gave yourself the ability to stand firm in that and being done with any sort of mental fuckery, any sort of um, backstabbing, cheating, 
painful situations. The Ten of Swords is very much uh, an energy of the worst is behind you. So you really could be done with lacking the self-confidence to be who it is you know you truly are, okay? This is really this is really fabulous. Now, I'm not trying to say that this is all going to happen like that, you know? This is an energy, uh, energies are fluid, okay? So the, the full moon in Gemini is generating this for you, okay? It could be maybe a few months, you know, maybe three months, because three months was a, or I'm sorry, three is a, was a strong number that I was channeling, that I'm channeling for this situation. It could be over the next three months that you really integrate these, it could be 10 months. It really doesn't matter. Time is an illusion. I really do not work. I do not work with timelines. Time is an illusion. Um, energies are fluid. All right. But it could be, you know, it doesn't have, this is not necessarily just going to happen that day and then you're good. No, it's going to take some time to integrate. Even though time is an illusion, it's going to take some time for the physical body, for the physical manifestation to catch up with this new sense of self-confidence. Yeah. All right. So post, post full moon energies, you have your first set of surrounding energies, the sun. That's fabulous. Now, I was channeling yellow, okay? And yellow is a color of the sun. And here you go. You've got the sun. So post full moon, you got the sun. You've got illumination. You've got clarity. You've got some aha moments I'm hearing. Um, also, I want to take a look at this. I love that this deck is gorgeous. I love this deck mainly because there are unicorns on it. But in this deck here, the sun is depicted as two people in union. You could even say in marriage. But this is that union between masculine and feminine within. So post full moon energies. Now I'm picking up that for some of you, maybe something happens um, in Thanksgiving, during Thanksgiving, because the full moon is on Thanksgiving here in the United States. But maybe for some of you in Thanksgiving, some things are illuminated for you that help you understand how you have, how you can come into greater union with yourself with the masculine and feminine energies within because we all have them. That is a kind of a specific message, but it did come through, so I wanted to point that out. But ultimately, this is, this is the illumination. This is what is going to help you see clearly and understand what it is you need to do, what it is you need to release in order for this union, this two of cups within, this union within can manifest. The sun is coupled with the five of cups. Hello? The, yes! You've got... The Three of Cups and the Two of Cups depicted in this deck. The Three of Cups can be um, third-party situations. Third-party situations could just be someone... Out now, absolutely, this could definitely be a third-party situation in the sense that you have the masculine and feminine within. You've got the union within. And then there's someone outside of you or some sort of situation outside of you that is putting a wrench, uh, 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 driving a wedge between that masculine and feminine energy within. There you go. Third party energies right there. But you see, with the five of cups here, and many with many five of cups, this is depicted as those three cups, the energies of the three of cups, is spilled. But then you're still left with the two of cups here. So illumination as to social settings, social uh, situations, people outside of you, people outside of your autonomy, your um, sovereignty, who have been trying to like, who basically have been driving a wedge between you and yourself, right? So there's the illumination, the clarity is surrounding that situation. That's beautiful. Wow. Second set of surrounding energies post full moon, you have... <laughs> what did I say? The Ace of Swords. There's the clarity. Now, for some of you, this really could be an epiphany. That aha moment that really just kind of blows... <laughs> Whoa, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> That really just kind of blows everything out of the water. Uh-oh. I just realized I don't have a present. Um, <laughs> sorry, guys. I'm going to put this here. Okay. So this, is, this really could be an epiphany, a strong epiphany for many of you. But it's really going to be an understanding. You know, it's you have the sun, and now you have the ace of swords. This is the clarity. This is the aha moment. This is seeing clearly. But with the ace of swords, this is also... The energies of um, of cutting through, cutting something out, cutting through something, okay? Literally cutting something out. You have the Ace of Swords, which is coupled with the Page of Cups. 
Look at that, guys. The Page of Cups is right underneath the Page of Wands. The Page of Cups is the dreamer. Is this is uh, this could be an apology. This could be some sort of reconciliation for some of you. Yes, this could be. This could be the reconciliation within your within you know within yourself. Finally realizing how you may have been leaving yourself out in the cold, how you may have been um, fighting against yourself and now reconnecting and recognizing this and apologizing to yourself, whatever, that kind of thing. This could just be a reconciliation between people. There could be, this could be family members, friends, people from your past, whatnot, whatever. Um, this is also dreaming up a new reality for yourself. So now that you have this clarity with the Ace of Swords and the Sun, now that you see where you may have, what you have, the burdens you may have been carrying, what burdens you might want to be releasing, now you can dream, now that you have this clarity and potentially have cut some things out to make some space, now you can dream up a new reality for yourself. That is quite beautiful. Your challenge, post full moon, you got... The Empress. Wowie, wow, wow. Fertility, okay? Now, this doesn't seem like so much of a challenge. This is, this really just feels, I mean, yeah, it's a challenge for some of us because now we have to remain in this nurturing energy in order for our dreams, what we've been dreaming up here, or in, in order for um, our new manifestations to come in we need to remain in this empress energy we need to remain in this energy of loving ourselves unconditionally and unconditionally i'm also getting an energy of patience here that could be the most challenging aspect many of us are going to want this just to happen right now so actually it's very that's mostly why i was channeling that's the the message of this may this is not just going to happen overnight. You're not going to have this epiphany and then the new is going to have be right there in your face that instant. No, it's going to take some time to gestate, to manifest, to germinate. You got to plant this. You got to cut the space, uh, uh, clear the space, and then plant the seeds. But before you can even plant the seeds, you got to generate them. How do you generate them? You dream. Aha! Page of Cups. Okay, great. So your challenge post full moon is the empress being in that nurturing energy being in that loving energy that fertile energy and allowing things to manifest in due time in divine timing again time is an illusion and i think it was missy of saltwater heels to row i think it was her that i heard her say um time is an illusion and so divine oh actually no it wasn't missy it was um Indigo Moon's healing. She was saying that time is an illusion and so divine timing is an illusion because really what that means is the energies just have to be in alignment. Well, the Empress is that nurturing energy that's going to help get those energies into alignment while also maintaining the integrity and the individuality of the individuals in play, okay? Or the, the energies in play. You know what I mean? You gotta get it. The Empress for your challenge is coupled with See, guys, look at that. The Ten of Cups. Now, this, I'm also getting an energy. The Divine is saying you have to remain in this energy of, of belief. The Empress believes in all of her children, in all of her manifestations. She does not let anyone get in the way of what she knows is true and what of what she truly desires and what her, 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 her children um, those she cares for, those that she has taken under her wing for nurturance, she believes in them fully. She does not let she does not let anyone other any other opinions get in the way of who she knows these individuals to be and who these individuals are in and of themselves. Okay, you have to believe that all of your fulfillment is gonna happen, and keep dreaming, keep dreaming. Okay. Final closing message, post full moon from the Tarot, we have, yes, victory with the Six of Wands. This victory comes in the form of finally releasing some burdens that had just had to be let go of because these burdens were keeping you from manifesting what it is you truly, truly desire with the Ten of Cups and the Empress, okay? Man, is that beautiful. So much Leo energy here. We've got strength, the king of wands, the sun, and now the six of wands. Leo is about pride, strength, leadership, 
honor, glory, victory, family, honoring the self, being aware, being self-aware. And that's very much the sun energy, self-awareness. Self-mastery too, obviously with the three of pentacles. The six of wands for your closing message post full moon is coupled with woo, the Hierophant. Now, the Hierophant is the fifth card in the major arcana. The Hierophant is about the status quo, uh, institutions, marriage, government, school, universities, things like that. The Hierophant is also about learning and teaching. To me also, the Hierophant is a depiction of our fifth dimensional selves, okay? So what I'm getting here with this, I'm getting embodying and learning, oh, embodying more of our fifth dimensional higher being, but also learning more, okay? This is really about learning and also teaching, I'm hearing too, because you learn through going through this period of self-discovery, of introspection, of self-mastery, and once you emerge from it victorious, then you will be able to help guide and teach others through your own experience. That's really quite beautiful. Some of you could be working towards marriage. Okay, these two of cups, uh, this, this two of cups that came out doesn't necessarily have, oh shoot, I'll get there in a second. But this two of cups doesn't necessarily have to be just a union within the self. It can, it can talk about some sort of soulmate relationship. And if this is something that you're trying to manifest, the way you do that is by clearing up the burdens and the blockages within you so that you have space for a soulmate to come in, a romantic partner to come in. Now, the cool thing that I just realized, we started the reading with the high priestess. We're ending the reading with her counterpart, the Hierophant. That is so cool. <laughs> That is so cool. But it's telling the story of where we are going. We're starting with this full moon of doing some work, some self-mastery work in dealing with our own inner demons, dealing with our own secrets, things that we've been hiding from ourselves, things that others have been hiding from us that have been holding us back, and doing the work to, to uh, heal and ameliorate, fix those situations. And when we come out of the full moon, number one, we have victory because I'm definitely seeing victory with the three of cups here. Vic, uh, uh, cele uh, I'm sorry, victory in the form of celebration. This could be social celebration. Like I said, this could be uh, uh, connecting with soul tribe, um, you know, just being congratulated by the energies of your soul family, your soul tribe. You also have victory here with the six of wands, right? And then through that victory, number one, you embody more of yourself, but then you also are able to teach others to potentially change the status quo. I'm getting energies of blazing a trail and being a, a blazing a trail for others to then follow in your footsteps. I'm getting a very much an energy of follow me guys with the six of wands and the Hierophant. I'm hearing, I'm, I'm hearing declarations of like, I will, I will lead you to your own personal salvation. Be careful. Be very careful. Okay. Do not, I'm, I'm not advising anyone to follow anyone with blind faith, but there's definitely an energy of blazing some sort of trail that others can then follow in your footsteps. And this ultimately in its healthiest form would be helping others blaze their own trail or giving others the inspiration to follow their own desires and follow their own truths rather than what society, institution, religious uh, organizations, uh, a dogma of some sort, uh, family traditions, uh, ancestral karmas, anything like that, keeping that at bay and following in your own footsteps. Uh, well, blazing your own trail. <laughs> Actually, it would, it kind of, yeah, it kind of would be following in your own footsteps because your higher self would be leading the way. So you're following your higher self here with the, with the, the, Her the Hierophant, the fifth, the fifth card of the major arcana, our higher selves being of the fifth dimension. Yes. Beautiful. All in all, this is a really beautiful re reading, guys. 
Okay, so next we're going to get into the oracle section. I'm going to start with the unicorn oracle. I just want to get some practical guidance, some practical messages here for dealing with this full moon and moving through the energies of this full moon. All right, spirit and unicorns, please bring forward the best messages in regards to the full moon in Gemini, November 22nd, healer. I'm going to do one more pull here. Ah, underneath the deck so far is passion. So this is a very much the page of wands energy here. Also the six of wands and the king of wands. Trailblazers, definitely. And that's definitely the energies of a healer. Imagination, you see, dreaming. What is it that you truly want to manifest? Okay, we're good. What is it that you truly want to manifest? And look at that. Underneath the deck, you have action. Now is the perfect time to act. Take inspired, um, take, yes, take inspired action towards your dreams. Move forward with confidence. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I'm gonna leave that there. The first card that fell out is Healer. You have powerful healing gifts. Have faith in your abilities. Stay true to your path as a healer. Very much going against the grain, going against the status quo. Instead of honoring what everyone else tells you to do, honor yourself with the higher sun here. I know that is a, that's not a traditional way of of, of describing the higher sun. The higher sun is very much about the status quo, but for me. The hierophant can also mean, like I said, the higher self, okay? The true you, the you that you are when you came into this life before all of the conditioning, okay? Many of us are healers. And you would, and especially with the in, in, in the trailblazing aspect of things, in you walking, blazing your own trail, going your own way, you are acting as a healer by inspiring others to do the same. Why are you doing, why are you inspiring others? Because you are victorious. If you can do it, others can too. And that is the name of the game here. Imagination. Envision a new reality. Give yourself permission to dream. Believe in unlimited possibilities. I mean, hello, Ace of Swords and the Page of Cups. The Page of Cups is the dreamer. What are you cutting out of your life and what can you fill it with? Dream. Use your imagination. Allow yourself to believe that there is more out there than what everyone says. The Hierophant. Trust in your higher self. Trust in your higher self. I'm channeling the song um, More to Life by Stacey Orico. Again, that came out during the morning coffees this week, I believe. I think it was this week. Yeah, this past week. There's more. There's more, but you have to believe in it. You have to believe in it in order to experience it. And this is not an energy of, oh, well, I'll believe it when I see it. No, you have to believe it in order to see it. There you go. Final message here, discernment. All is not what it seems. Stay true to your knowing. Keep your dreams a secret. Okay, that makes sense. Because you don't necessarily want anyone putting their doubt into the situation. Because when you, if, if you were to speak of this prematurely, then others can start putting, sticking their fingers, their energetic fingers into the situation and just everything just goes haywire. You don't want that. So yeah, practice some discernment. Keep, keep your just, keep your dreams to yourself. At least until you have it material, it's, it's manifesting in such a way that now nobody can really stop the momentum. At least get the momentum going, okay? But all in all, this is a beautiful message. Don't anyone allow, yeah, here we go, the Hierophant. Don't let anyone derail what it is you wish to manifest with the Page of Cups also, right? Sweet. Okay, next, Crystal Mandala. And then we're going to close with the Lightworker Oracle.
All right, everybody. Okay. Best messages, please, spirit. Woo! Her golden grace. Take this one, shit. Okay. There we go. Woo. All right. We've got quite a few here. Underneath the deck, you've got higher will. So this is absolutely talking about what it is you truly wish to desire. Uh, what is you truly desire to manifest, to experience. This is, I'm getting really warm right now, but this is also the higher will of God, of the universe, of spirit, whoever you want to, however you describe the energies of source, whatever. Um, and it is really within source, God, creator's highest will for each and every one of us to be free and sovereign beings, to create the reality we wish to experience. And yes, that has a lot to do with the collective and all that. But at the same time, it's about who you truly are. What do you want to create in your little microcosm? Yes? How does that microcosm affect the macrocosm? Yes? Okay. First card that came out here is Her Golden Grace. Second is Descending Power. And third is the Inner Queen. We're going to start with her golden grace. Woo, I just got really warm. Okay. Her golden grace. We bring you the empowerment of her golden grace. Mother, I'm sorry, Divine Mother Lakshmi, who brings blessings of enlightenment and prosperity, beauty and good fortune, smiles upon you now. Open your mind to the reality of divine generosity without limit. Open your heart to feel worthy of her love. When you allow her to grant you bounty to bless you with her golden grace, she is empowered to shine her divine beauty in the world, to heal, uplift, inspire, and enchant the souls in need. This is very much an energy of allowing yourself to believe that there's more. Goddess Lakshmi is about ab abundance and beauty and empowerment. So when you empower yourself to believe in more, to believe that you are capable of more, that you can manifest more than, than what everyone says is possible, when you believe in the power of miracles, then you, and you act through that, you help then you then help others believe in it as well. It's like a ripple, a ripple effect, a domino effect, yes? Excellent. Next, we have card number 28, Descending Power. Ascended Master Lao Tzu and Zing Kite. The card number 38 is Goddess Lakshmi and Dendritic Agate. Okay, but here we are, card number 28, Descending Power. We bring you the blessing of Descending Power. Excuse me, guys. This is the powerful downward current of energy that allows for manifestation, for strengthening of the spiritual connection to the body, and of bringing your light to the earth. In the spiritual tradition, there is much emphasis on energy rising. Yet, without the balance of descending power, you will feel lost in your mind, scattered in your thinking, and frustrated in your efforts to see the inspired ideas you receive translated into completed tasks in the physical world. The uprising power helps you shift frequencies and access inspiration, whilst the descending power helps you ground to create. There is a time and a place for both the rising and the descending currents of divine energy. You are guided to attend at this time to the descending power to make best progress on your life journey. Okay, so this is absolutely, and maybe this is why I'm feeling so warm right now, but this is literally the, 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 the power of the divine, divine descending down into you, empowering you, helping you heal, helping you grow, helping you feel strong enough to surmount these obstacles, to, to, to release these burdens, to do this self-mastery, to rebuild yourself. Yes? Beautiful. Finally, we have card number 50, the inner queen. Oops. Goddess Persephone and Ruby. We bring you the empowerment of the inner queen. The inner queen exercises authority through divine feminine wisdom. Her empowerment is active within men and women that consciously seek to honor feeling, 
instinct, and intuition, and choose to live their lives according to a moral code of compassion. When the inner queen stirs within, judgment is replaced with empathy for your own suffering and that of others. You can understand that human beings who cannot resolve their suffering will unconsciously act out their pain in the world. They are unconsciously expressing their inner story with their outer actions, the story of their inner pain. The healing power of the inner queen brings inner pain to consciousness where it can be fi where it finally can be released and then and the excuse me and the soul freed. This can happen because of her compassion. She does not approach life with a fearful or judging nature, so she can move freely through all realms, witness great pain and darkness, and remain centered in her heart, shining a gentle light of intention for the liberation from suffering for all beings. She reminds us of our innate divine dignity and the healing power of our compassion. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. All right, so now to close out the reading, I do just want to pull one message from the Lightworker Oracle. All right, guys, here we go. Final closing message for the full moon in Gemini, please, Spirit. There we go. Okay. Closing message. <laughs> Grounding. Card number 15. What is this? This is grounding yourself. This is grounding your higher self, more of your higher self into your physical body, more of who you truly are into your physical body. This is more descending power here with card number 28. I'm really, this is, this is the divine feminine energies, receptive, receiving, grounding yourself into the earth, becoming clear on who you are, becoming clear on what it is you truly want in your life, grounding yourself and saying, do I really need to be accepting this from these people anymore? Do I really need to be carrying these burdens anymore? The divine is saying, you sure as shit don't. <laughs> you sure as shit don't, guys. If it does not serve you, if it does not resonate with you, if you are just holding on to it because you want to, because it's how you grew up, it's tradition, um, um, uh, you don't want to disappoint your mother, your father, your sisters, your parent, your, your kid, whatever. Guilt. Uh, obligation. Ground yourself. Get real with yourself. Do you really need to hold on to this any longer? Is this really serving you? Most likely not. Grounding your power as a, as a divine human being, as a divine being. Everyone has divinity within them, regardless of how they may appear, regardless of how, regardless if you want to call them a narcissist, a sociopath, this, that, and the third. It doesn't matter. There is divinity in everyone. And now this is an opportunity to ground that much more of your own personal divinity into your physical reality. Let's just read this for a little bit, see if there's anything I missed. Wow, I opened right to it. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> Card number 15, grounding. You long for the free and open worlds of spirit and light, yet you also yearn to experience the healing power and divine joy of sacred sound and living color. You are meant to bring joy, beauty, and comfort to this world to share the spiritual light. To do so, you need grounding. Your dreams want you just as much as you want them. Grounding helps you bring your dreams to life in your world for the benefit of many. That is so beauter, be beauter, beautiful. <laughs> when a reminder comes from higher guidance to ground oneself, it is a loving encouragement, never a judgment. Grounding is a spiritual version of remembering to call your mother. <laughs> it is a chance to check in with what is happening in your physical life and make sure you are giving appropriate time and energy to what really matters to your heart. It is a chance to appreciate the beauty of the natural world and the love in your relationships. It is a chance to make sure your spiritual work is being applied in your life in ways that feel good for you. It is a chance to speak your prayers 
rather than only think them. You might even dance them or create a colorful flower offering for your altar to, or sing them from your heart. When we are guided to ground ourselves, I'm sorry, we are guided to ground ourselves when there has been an increase of light to the head. This can occur through meditation, prayer, or conscious connection with spirit. You might be on fire with ideas and inspiration, but struggling to express them all practically. You may even feel congested or tense in parts of your body where the energy needs some help to flow. This is a sign to move in a way that, is, that feels freeing, strengthening, and expressive, and to add healthy relaxation and exercise into your lifestyle to allow for healing to occur. When the light can move through your entire body, bring vitality and help, I'm sorry, then the light can move through your entire body, bringing vitality and helping you translate your ideas into your reality. Okay, guys. So there it is. Quite a beautiful reading, I'd say. Um, you know, hold on tight. This could be a rough one, but you know what? It's all in service of your highest good. The divine has you. The universe has your back. Everything is going to be just fine. So I would say move ahead with the confidence of, the, of all kinds of kings of wands. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. Um, much love to you all. Happy Thanksgiving. And I look forward to connecting with you again soon. Yeah. Take care. Mwah. Bye.